Feminists must not live in the real world because I don't know this fantasy world that Sarkeesian resides in where there is a dearth of female characters. In reality, not only are there female characters written into scripts by the busload, producers have made it possible to view female protagonists everywhere you turn. You could surf the channels and easily end up on a show starring a female protagonist. Let's go down the list of strong female protagonists Character leads. New Girl, 2011. Yet a sitcom, it definitely has a female protagonist. Bones, 2005. CSI crime drama has a female protagonist. Mysteries of Laura, 2014. This female protagonist is about a single mom, NYPD homicide detective, who cracks case after case while raising twin boys who are really wild. Castle, 2009. Female protagonist, detective, solves crimes with the help of a novelist. Caprica, 2009. Has a strong female protagonist that is set with unfortunate events that befalls her character as well as her friend. Bionic Woman, 2007. Sarkeesian could have added this one to her thesis. I think this qualifies as science fiction. Not only is Jamie Summers the protagonist, she works with a senior woman and has a sister. That's two more women. But the lead is Bionic Woman, a female. Plus, the actress who plays Starbuck in uh, Battlestar Galactica has a recurring role. And during the course of the series, one of the male leads is killed off. A guy, which seems to be a guy in an icebox as it were. Dark Angel, 2000. Sarkeesian could have easily included this show in her thesis. It is a science fiction and a decent show to boot. It has interesting backstrap because the show has an electromagnetic pulse that damages the city and destroys the, the infrastructure and the economic system. Speaking of strong female characters, Max, the female lead, has a very strong character and I don't see how Sarkeesian, even with her lopsided view of the world, could mistake Max, despite her name, as masculine. Felicity, 1998, a college-bound female lead protagonist, Orphan Black, 2013. Though this is a newer show, its existence shows that strong female characters don't need to be championed by Sarkeesian to be produced. The show is worth checking out. The premise is the female protagonist and mother learns that she is a clone and during the course of the series encounters her duplicates, which are obviously played by the same actress. The show should wake Sarkeesian up from her delusion she is under and realize that the infrequency of woman is a myth and it looks like it is the white male who will soon be to the token character. Of course, many games already have female characters. Some even have a choice of not one, but two female characters as far back as the classic video game Metal Slugs. If Sarkeesian did any real research, she would know this and stop spreading falsehoods. Lost Girl, 2010. This is another new show. It illustrates that a continuous supply of these tough female characters is nearly endless. This one features yet another protagonist with supernatural powers, no less. What hurtful thing can Sarkeesian say about this fantasy show? The show 100, 2014. This science fiction show set 97 years after a nuclear war has destroyed civilization. Where is Sarkeesian's view of the show? Will she have anything negative to say about the whopping five leading females on this show? And those are just the leads. Of course, there are more female roles to speak of. Notice the show does follow a young female character that is not over-sexualized who plays a major leading role. Legend of Korra, another female-led show. 2012. This is a hand-drawn fantasy cartoon show that takes place in a fictional world where they set with technology that is 100 years old in the first season and later the technology steadily improves over the other seasons. Continuum. The protagonist is yet another female character that travels 
to current times from the year 2077. The show is fairly well written with interesting plots that are written on top of other plots. It was been on TV for three seasons now. Joan of Arcadia, teenage protagonist girl who is able to converse with God. Party of Five had three female characters. My Soko Life. This show is another female uh, protagonist lead, a teenager with interesting friends that includes a very gay male character who spends most of his time chit-chatting in the girl's bathroom. The Americans. 2013. This show is about two Russian deep cover agents that pretend to be an American-born married couple. To complete their cover, they have two kids together. Though this isn't a female-led show and more of a partnership, you could argue that Elizabeth plays the stronger character, the one that is more concerned in completing her mission for Mother Russia. Agent Carter, 2015. Just when you thought this list wasn't long enough comes yet another strongly-led female role show to add to the airwaves. Pan Am. 2011. This was a largely woman-led show because it follows the actions of four female flight attendants in a period drama that shows how once Pan Am was the most glorious way to fly. If you're looking for a show to delight, then turn no further than the 2004 show Wonderfalls. If Sarkeesian wasn't looking for a science fiction nirvana where everyone was a feminist and they replaced money with cotton candy, she could have found some way to include this brilliant show that was canceled before its time. The star is about a young woman named Jay Tyler, who is a recent college graduate. She has an older sister, and her best friend is a black woman. Jonathan McIntosh would be ecstatic. Did I mention that her mother also plays a large role in the show? That makes four female characters, and one of them is black. To quote Mr. Mindless, that is more important than you know. How could I have almost left this show off the list? It is definitely pure gold. Look it up if you have the chance. One of the best shows ever made and it is because the acting is good and the writing is better. It's not because a woman plays the lead role, but it works because there is a woman in the lead role. Mainly because the writers have created their world and they have written the stories to interact with their characters. Sarkeesian doesn't understand story and character. She looks for superficial reasons that conflict with her world view. That stories make factual sense is meaningless to her. She even removes characters from their conceptual context in order to critique them. She is not so much a critic as a social crusader. Wonderfalls is too good for her. If she knew it existed, it would undo her whole world. She is like water, and facts are like olive oil to her. I have listed 20 shows with female protagonists. Ania Sarkeesian used far fewer shows in her thesis, and the women characters didn't necessarily star in their own shows. Surely I have a better basis than she did to prove something. Let her try to compare Zoe Washburn from Firefly to Jane Taylor from Wonderfalls. Zoe is not a main character. To put it in a way that Sarkeesian can understand, she doesn't have much agency. But Anita treats Zoe in her thesis like she is not restricted as so and judges her accordingly. Remember before how I mentioned that Sarkeesian doesn't understand character and context? Her whole thesis is other crap pull up because she doesn't put this together. When you're part of an ensemble, you are not going to be showing a lot of range. And as Zoe is concerned, she plays the part of the muscle. That was the part that was shown. Anita takes characters out of context for her thesis and sees what she wants to see. She seems completely unaware of the unreliable storyteller. A million things could be happening in these characters' heads, and the director, for whatever reason, only shows part of what is really happening. The camera might be focusing on the actions of Zoe right now, but what about 10 minutes ago when it was focused on someone else? At least, with the protagonist, the director is obligated to keep this person in frame most of the time. The lunacy of Sarkeesian is displayed in her video when she demands that we give non-playable characters agency and a history. Can't you see her produce a video game where the non-playable character kills the player and takes over the game? Secondary characters don't have deep histories. Their stories aren't that rich. That is why you can't compare Zoe from Firefly with Jay from Wonderfalls. That would be like comparing firewood to a fine dining table. But when Sarkeesian is at work, she could compare anything to anything. 
and that is when she becomes dangerous and unreliable in her observations, taking moments at the beginning of a show to summarize a character when this said character develops over several seasons and grows a great deal past Anita's first impressions. To say the very least, Sarkeesian will give you the worst character reference. There wasn't much prose in Sarkeesian's thesis paper, though I found the filler to be quite comical and revealing. How else would I know the characters she thought were evil? In the show Battlestar Galacta, for instance, she lists mostly all the Cylons as evil. But they are only evil from the human side. Sarkeesian fails to reason that Cylons believe their side to be good and the human side evil. One woman's terrorists are another woman's rebel fighters. When Luke Skywalker destroyed the Death Star, the Emperor didn't consider him to be a good guy. Sarkeesian cannot seem to understand that Cylons don't die and can respond. Because she doesn't understand this mechanism, she is unable to follow the story. A non-Cylon character, a female human admiral, Sarkeesian lists as evil, would have to be taken out of context in which she made her decisions to be seen this way. But alas, Sarkeesian is happy to do it. She is like a child forcing puzzle pieces together because she needs them to fit her thesis. How else can you explain her remark that Starbuck is an anti-hero? Clearly Sarkeesian's judgment needs to be called into question. Being cocky, abrasive, and a loudmouth does not make you an anti-hero. Dexter Morgan, for instance, was an anti-hero. A character that would kill people who killed other people. And by day, Dexter worked for the police as a blood spatter analysis. The sight being a killer, he was kind, loving father, friend, and husband.